Well, what a pleasure this is. He's the two-time New Zealand Ironman champion, four-time coast-to-coast champion, three times winner of the Tauranga half, fifth in Hawaii, third in the Ironman World Champs in Utah. But we're talking about the weekend, the one at the Mount, of course, in Tauranga, where our third win in that very prestigious event in the half Ironman. So welcome to the show, Braden, and congratulations, mate. Uh, yeah, cheers, guys. Thanks uh, for having me on. So a half Iron Man, how, how long does it take for you to physically recover after finishing that event? I'm really interested in the last couple of days. So after you've actually done it, what do you spend the next 48 hours doing? Uh, yeah, pretty low key for me. Um, yeah, just a couple of light training sessions and uh, eat plenty of food, um, get nutrition back, uh, get loaded back up and uh, yeah, take it easy um, and we'll start back training properly tomorrow. Okay, so, so you don't have a week off or anything like that? Uh, sometimes I do. It's just this time of year is a bit... Uh, I head to Tasmania in a week and a half for another 70.3 over there. So uh, that and then Ironman New Zealand's coming up. So it's just a little bit condensed. So try and keep things moving for the next wee bit. Third one at the Mount, and the event's got such a rich history. So many great names. Um, Tony O'Hagan, Scott Balance, Craig Alexander, Cameron Brown, all of these people have hold, uh, have won that... But you set the record over the weekend. What does it mean to hold that course record for you now? Um, yeah, it was awesome. It's uh, yeah, I said it, I think I had it a few years ago, um, and then lost it. And uh, yeah, it is a such a sort of iconic uh, New Zealand event. And um, yeah, I had a, a really good race. And I think probably for me, uh, it's nice to be a little bit older now and still getting a little bit faster. So it's always a benefit. How does that happen, Braden? How I mean, so what? And 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 do do be do be as specific about this. What what parts of it? What kind of discipline is it that you're actually better at and faster at? Um. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, really. I think I think just overall, actually, I think my cycling's definitely progressed over the last few years, um, and that's been a big thing that I've worked on. Uh, and then just consistency, I, I think it sort of shows that you know if you can get faster at all three disciplines just a little bit, um, then it, it makes you quite a lot faster overall. So, yeah, definitely um, been able to put a whole race together, and uh, it seems to shape the time off. Your swim is remarkable considering you never came from a swimming background. So, you know, how did you become so good considering that you didn't start swimming until later in life? Um, Yeah, I mean, for me, it's just been probably a lot of hard work, really. Uh, I do take a lot from my kayaking background, obviously, with coast to coast and stuff like that. I got to understand a lot about, I guess, water dynamics, fluidity, um, the stroke and the catch and pull and everything like that, um, how to create pressure on the hand and paddle. Um, but uh, yeah, and then uh, I guess a, a lot of hours, a lot of hard work. Braden Curry is with us on the platform. When you do a, a half Iron Man, what kind of different psychology is involved in that for you, as opposed to the full one? Is the full one something that is a much more of a, a test of the mind? Uh, yeah, I'd say absolutely. Yeah, a half you can tend to kind of get through without too much suffering, um, and you know you have to push really, really hard to uh, to get to a bit of a dark place where pretty much a full distance. And I mean, you know it's you know it's coming sometimes throughout the eight hours uh, of your day. Um, there's going to be some pretty tough times. So yeah, definitely a bit of a different mental kind of game. Um, and uh, yeah, you know there's a bit more suffering to come in a full. When you describe it's not too much suffering, for us lay people, for us couch potatoes and sports lovers, what do you mean by that? Um, oh, I think, you know, when you push the body uh, that hard, then, uh, you know, there's you know, cramps set in or the just completely bonking and having no energy and uh, everything hurting and uh, your back going Um and you're just feeling really flat and uh, absolutely shattered and wanting to stop. So, yeah, there's, there's definitely some pain, uh, a physical and, and then emotional and mental, uh, that you uh, go through when you try and race uh, that hard for eight hours. So there, there are bits of it where you say you go into a dark place. There are bits of it which I'm sort of just making the assumption here that your mind is in a black tunnel and you're thinking, my God, where is the light at the end of that? How the hell do I get to the end? Is that, is that, is that part of it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, everything feels so much longer. I guess normally you go out kind of for a four or five k run, and then yeah, you you don't really think about that. But then uh, you get into a an Ironman, and you see another sort of five or six k in front of you, and you wonder how you're ever going to get through that. So 
um, yeah, there's, there's sort of uh, pinnacle moments within the race where um, everything feels like it's shutting down and uh, you just want to lay down and pull the pin. Um, your body, muscles, everything's telling you that. But uh, I guess you've got to yeah, try and find a way to overcome that. How do you do that, Braden? How do you, how do you, how do you train your mind to get through those, those kind of times? Um, I think at the end of the day, a lot of it comes down to a the pace you're going and and your nutrition. So um, just trying to really focus in on what you're doing at that present time. So getting the nutrition back on board, making sure you've got the carbs, uh, and just sort of ease up the pace for a little bit till uh, you hopefully start coming out of it and feeling comfortable again. Um, yeah, there's definitely um, yeah some moments that yeah you go through and and you do want to pull the pin, but you just got to stay sort of mind strong and know that um, give it five, ten minutes with some decent fueling and, and a little bit lighter, to, you'll come back around and you'll be happy to be racing again. I'm always fascinated by the mentality of this and, and what and do you how much work do you do psychologically before races and do you have somebody that helps you with that? Um, I, I know there's a lot of athletes who do. It, it's not something that I feel like I've ever struggled with. I mean, I enjoy racing. I enjoy like the competitiveness competition of it. And you put someone beside me, and I'll I'll just keep going harder. So um, that kind of tends to come pretty easy. Um, I also enjoy I enjoy kind of working hard. So no matter what I was doing, whether I was um, you know splitting wood or um, fencing or building uh, everything for me seems to be kind of a see how fast and how hard I can go while I'm doing it so um, that sort of mentality crosses over the racing and um, yeah it seems to get me get me through some of the tough spots Braden Curry is with us on the platform a four time winner of the half iron man at the mount and won that race and set a record again over the weekend so just we do you do you have a psychological process you go through when you hit that barrier? Do you have a kind of steps that you go through in your mind? Because you are because what you're saying is that you know it's coming, you've experienced before, you know you can always and will get out the other end as well. Um yeah, exactly. a lot of it I do fall back on past experience. Um and uh, look for those other sort of moments in my uh, in the history of uh, either sport or myself racing. Um, I definitely think about I guess the hours of the effort that I've put in to be put myself into that situation, and uh, the fact that it is a choice to be there. So uh, if I choose to be there, then what's another hour of suffering um, to get me to the finish line in a good position that I can be proud of? So. Yeah, definitely uh, lots of different mind games go on. Sometimes I just shut my eyes and run and <laughs> keep them close wow. for as long as wow. I can. And uh, Sometimes I think about my kids and my wife uh, and my family and friends that are out there um, cheering me on. And um, Yeah, just lots of little drivers uh, that can get you through some of those tougher times. Uh, look, I'm going to ask you some questions, and some of them might sound a bit silly, so kind of um, please uh, forgive me for it. But when is it? Is the run always the toughest bit because it's last? Um, no, I probably find the bike and the Ironman uh, quite often the toughest part. Um, yeah, it just seems to you drag on uh, for quite some time with the run. In a lot of ways, you can sort of feel like you can see the finish. Um, so... Yeah, uh, I find the bike, um, but then I guess some of the more painful moments you go through is probably on the run. So, yeah, a bit of a mix. Okay, and and so when you're racing like the half on the weekend, and we, I mean, I just use the word, I mean, we just throw that away. It's a, it's a half Ironman, for God's sake, people. So let, let's just go through. So how many k's in the, in the, in the, in the water for a start? Um, we did 1.9k in the water. Okay, on the bike? Uh, we did 90k. Okay, so it's normally 180. And this, and and is the run the half marathon? The run is the half marathon, 21k. It's okay. The old uh, back of the mountain thrown in there. Ah, Lord. Okay, so and how hot right, was no. it? How hot was it out there? Oh, I think it got pretty hot towards the end. I saw sort of 30 on the on the Garmin uh, afterwards, so it was getting pretty hot. But it was only really hot for. I guess half an hour, the last half of the race. Are you racing against anyone in your mind, or are you racing yourself, or are you racing a clock? Um, I guess I'm racing the competition in my mind. Um, yeah, I don't really race the clock. Uh, I'm not very good at math, so there's no point in me racing the clock. Um, I just look out to see how the competition's going, and then 
a lot of my racing is done on feel, um, and yeah, I guess how I'm feeling at that present time. I want to talk about Hawaii in a second, but before we do, um, you know, you're going to Tasmania. So is this is this part of an ongoing world circuit? Yep, yep. I guess this is the start of the calendar uh, year for us uh, and in general. So, yep, New Zealand summer racing. I'm in mean, New Zealand uh, in March, and then um, I'll take a little bit of time off probably, uh, and then build into. I guess some um, yeah you know, the races in Europe and uh, world champs hopefully in Nice. Uh, Do you enjoy the training? Is enjoy a word that you'd use? Yeah, I do enjoy the training, to be honest, and probably more than I did when I was younger. Um, I think probably for me, I I never grew up uh, knowing sport has been a profession. Uh, so I never accepted it for quite a long time. Where I've probably come to the point where I know that I have made a career. Uh, out of it in a lot of ways and it's my job and it's, it's what I do and I don't feel like I'm sacrificing um, a lot for it because, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who work a lot more hours than what I have to. So um, I enjoy being fit, I enjoy being healthy and uh, it's, a, it's a really good job. I get to spend lots of time with my kids and my family um, on the sidelines. So, yeah, it's good. Braden Curry is with us on the platform. So you've won the, the Coast to Coast four times and you're you know, a two-time New Zealand Ironman champion. Uh, you've competed in Hawaii a number of times. What is what is more difficult is going up that goat track and doing the kayaking, and crossing from one side of the country to the other. And if anyone actually gets their head around that and think of what that actually involves and then, of course, you, you bike into Sumner, the wind's always in your face when you do it. I mean, or, or, or the Ironman or the Ironman in Hawaii. Is there one that is worse you know, or harder to, to actually compete in than the rest? Um, oh, I don't know. It's always a hard one to, to say, isn't it? Um, I definitely, over my years, uh, remember an immense amount of suffering um, for that coast to coast, uh, the longest day. And, and most of that was definitely uh, self, uh, what do you say, instigated, self-driven uh, by the fact <laughs> of how hard I used to go um, from the get-go. I look back now and I, I wonder how, how my body held up. Um, to how hard I used to just go from the start line. So um, I went through some pretty tough uh, moments, definitely, in uh, racing that. And then, yeah, Kona. Kona's just a bit different, I think. It's just uh, it's that heat that you just start to get you, start to heat you up, and you just want to escape from it. Um, but you can't, and uh, you're exercising in it. So each, each to their own, I would say. Uh, okay. They're both very, very challenging. People, it is relentless. If you've been to Hawaii and you've been on the lava flows, I look they look beautiful on the National Geographic docos, but when the sun hits, mate, that's like being in an oven out there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. There's sort of those moments uh, you're coming back from hardly on your bike and you just last at a 20k and you hit these open, uh, where well, they're not, you know, the dried up black lava, mm, but uh, mm. the heat just, you know, you're doing, you're still doing 40, 50k an hour on your bike, but it feels it feels so hot there's no relief from it at all so um yeah it's definitely challenging how important is that event to you is it something that is just like you, you i gotta get it and i gotta win it oh uh, yeah i think so like it, it feels like that i mean i'm not really the person to get too hung up on stuff um <laughs> in my career you know it is i enjoy, try to enjoy the journey uh as much as i can but um yeah i think from what I've done in the past, I, I definitely tend to end up in a sport uh, or a discipline like, you know, multi-sport or adventure racing or um, Xterra, and I want to race, and, you know, I want to race the best I can at uh, the World Championships at, at, you know, the most competitive uh, race within that kind of category of racing. So, yeah, it feels like at the moment um, that I want to have... Uh, a really good day at uh, Ironman World Champs in Kona, and uh, that would feel uh, like a huge uh, success in my career. Would that be retirement after that or not? Oh, uh, yep. Either way, it'll be retirement pretty soon. So I'd like to happen pretty quick. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, obviously, you know, with what you put your body through and the stresses of it and the amount of training and stuff like that, how long can you do this for? Um, oh, I mean, you can keep going forever if you ask Brownie. 
Um, <laughs> Ken Brown was the icon of New Zealand sport, isn't he? Go on. He's phenomenal how yeah, he, how he yeah. keeps racing. But, yeah, true. Um, yeah, no, I think for me, I definitely don't see me racing uh, at this level for probably more than two years. Um, I like racing and feeling like I can win, you know, the races that I start at. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've got lots of other things sort of going on in, in my life that I'd love to dedicate time to um, as well. So, yeah, I definitely see um, probably a couple of years' time and I definitely feel quite comfortable uh, retiring. Braden Curry is with us. Third in that Ironman World Champs in Utah with 10K to go. Is that kind of like an itch that you still need to scratch that one? Yeah, it is a bit of an itch, that one. Uh, it felt so uh, felt so good to be at the front of a World Championships race um, that uh, I kind of believed that I could have hung on and uh, won. Uh, but in the end, um, yeah, I got, I definitely got, I, I couldn't have probably done a whole lot more um, to hold off uh, Christian Blumenfeld, but uh, it was a bit of a heart wrench to get past by Lionel Sanders in the last 100 metres. Mm, God, oh my, yes, yeah. So, I mean, <clears throat> but you've got another couple of opportunities and hopefully you can kind of close that out. At the end of all of this, I mean, you're not going to give up training or anything. If, you know, can you play any other sports? Could you go back to like a team sport? <laughs> um can I play other sports? Uh, <laughs> uh, I could, yeah, I could. Um, but no, I, I, and again, I think for me, uh, I've definitely got plenty of ventures that I would like to continue on with um, mm. outside of the sporting window. Um, so I'll definitely stay involved and, uh, yeah, I'll stay connected to the sport, but um, I probably won't be racing in any way. Well, you know, the good mate and good mutual friend of of, of, of ours, Mark Watson Watto, who appears on the show every Tuesday and um look a dear friend and look and he you know, he, he put me, you know, well onto you and said, You've got to talk to Braden again and he describes you as as and I can't use this word because it rhymes with truck and starts with an F. He says, You're hard as that, you're as tough as anyone that he's ever seen. Um he just adores what you do and how hard you work and everything else, mate. I'm in awe, like the audience is in awe. And I just wish that you got so much more publicity for what the hell that you do. But you make us all exceptionally proud and I hope you get some kind of feeling of that. Um yeah, definitely. It's, uh, it's it's growing over the years, and as you know, what he's uh, definitely a campaigner um, and a lover of the sport. And those, yeah, I, I guess it is like probably as the years have gone on, I've, I've definitely come to be uh, acknowledge how hard as a I guess Ironman as a triathlon uh, event it uh, it is um, compared to a lot of other professional sports. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's definitely cool to see. Um, the sport growing in New Zealand and, and seeing great guys like Hayden Wild and that coming through mm, and mm. Um, you know their sports uh, got a strong uh, future in New Zealand and, and that's pretty cool Much admiration thank you so much for your time uh, congratulations on the win on the weekend all the very best for this year too mate Yeah cool thanks for having me on